Welcome back to another edition of Conference Chatter TV. My name is Eric Sorrentino. I'm the KUSports.com Big 12 blogger, and I'm here to pick some Big 12 games in Week 9 of the college football season. So far, we are 52-15, and 15, picking at a 77.6% clip. And in Week 9, I can't wait for this one. It's going to be number 3 Texas at number 13 Oklahoma State at 7 p.m. So let's get the picks going, starting with this game. Main storyline here is what happened kind of before the game this week. Des Bryant, Oklahoma State wide receiver, uh, was ruled ineligible for the remainder of the season. This is obviously a major blow to an Oklahoma State team that's going for its first victory over Texas in 12 years. Um, I don't know. I, I just think this Bryant ruling was a little bit too harsh on the part of the NCAA. I mean, when you have guys punching the opponent, in, like in the instance of Oregon's LeGarrette Blount, and then he has the chance to, you know, apparently return to Oregon this season. I mean, it just seems like there are problems when, you know, a guy like that can return to a team. But Des Bryant, you know, he wasn't all honest. He lied. You know, he made a mistake. But, you know, he didn't punch somebody in the face. And the NCAA is ruling that he can no longer return this season. I think Des Bryant's done with college. He's he's going to the NFL. Uh, ESPN.com. Uh, NFL draft analyst Todd McShay has Des Bryant as his number one receiver on the board. I think he's done in Stillwater and off to the NFL. But uh, let's get back to this game. If if Texas wins this game in Stillwater, it'll be a crazy atmosphere on Halloween night and everything. I'm kind of curious to see what all the, the fans look like there with the uh, bright orange. That combination with Halloween should be interesting. But if Texas wins this game, I truly think that they will run the table on their way to the BCS championship game. Um, and, I, and I think they do win it. I'm taking Texas in this one. The Longhorns' offense really came to life last week with 41 points at Missouri. Colt McCoy, their quarterback, no longer battling the flu. Everything seems to be working right now for the Longhorns. Um, then you combine that with the Texas defense playing great football. And I think the Longhorns are going to win this uh, at Stillwater. Uh, I've said from you know, a few weeks ago that I think Texas is going undefeated in their Big 12 slate. This is the last kind of major, major roadblock for the Horns. Uh, Oklahoma State's been playing well lately. Um, I have to give them credit. They've won five straight games. But really, you look at it, and the most impressive win in that time is a game at Texas A&M. So, I, you know, ever since that loss to Houston at home, they really haven't been tested that much. This is going to be a lot different, and I'm liking Texas on the road in Stillwater. Let's go to some other games here. We have Nebraska at Baylor at 11.30 a.m. Big question here, is this going to finally be the game that freshman quarterback Cody Green starts for Nebraska? That remains to be seen. Green, the Dayton, Texas native, going to be back in his home state here playing in Texas. And I think, you know, if there's ever a time to get the freshman's confidence going, this would be the game. You know, Baylor, they've lost three straight. They're not looking too good, of course, without their quarterback, Robert Griffin. I think if you want to play Cody Green, if Bo Pelini has plans to play Cody Green later in the season, um, you know, it's been known that this guy's the quarterback of the future for Nebraska. You know, I really think this is the game that, that the Huskers should, should bring him in. Um, particularly, you know, Nebraska should win this game. I'm going to take the Huskers on the road. They looked just atrocious at home against Iowa State last week losing 9-7, to seven, but I think this is a little bit different. I think Nebraska um, wins this game, and uh, I, I hope it's Cody Green because I'm curious. You know, I'm curious to see what Nebraska looks like with him at quarterback for a full game. You know, he's going to have some growing pains, but, you know, let's face it, the Nebraska offense has struggled late, uh, lately um, in the direction of, of Zach Lee. So let's see what Green has. I hope I hope he gets the start. Um, but, you know, with, with Cody Green or Zach Lee, I think Nebraska wins this game either way. Next, we have Missouri at Colorado at 12.30 p.m. In these Big 12 North games, I feel like I'm flipping a coin when, when I pick these games. Um, I'm going to go with Missouri on the road. Um, I could see this one going either way. And you know, Missouri's really, you know, they've dug themselves in that 0-3 hole in conference play. Uh, those losses were to some pretty pretty good teams, though, against Nebraska, Oklahoma State, and Texas. Finally, they get to play a team that they should beat in Colorado. Uh, I think Missouri is favored in this game still. 
despite it being on the road by a field goal. I can see them potentially covering. The key in this game is going to be Blaine Gabbert. You know, he's had the hurt ankle recently, said that he's going to practice this week, plans to play Saturday against Colorado. But he's been a different quarterback in the conf- in the Big 12 season. You know, you take a look at it, the f- uh, first four games of the season in the non-conference, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions. And then you look at it in conference play in three Big 12 games, only two touchdowns, five interceptions. It's been a lot different for Gabbard. I think this is a pretty decent game for him to get back on track, and I like Missouri to finally get that first Big 12 win of the season and win in Boulder. See, continuing on here, we have Kansas at Texas Tech at 2.30 p.m. Earlier this week, uh, Don Williams, uh, our good friend at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal, uh, told Matt Tate and me on Monday on our Going Deep podcast that it will probably be Seth Dagey who will be getting the start for Texas Tech. Uh, it will be no Stephen Sheffield. He's already out, but Taylor Potts hasn't particularly looked sharp since he returned from that concussion that he suffered. I think it was against New Mexico a couple games ago. But uh, it should be the freshman here, Daigie. Uh, he was 18 of 25 for 146 yards last week against Texas A&M. You know, I like Texas Tech at home in this game. You know, they've kind of been an enigma, have been the Red Raiders. You know, they look great at home against K-State. And then, you know, they were lit up against Texas A&M at home. So I, I don't think that this will, you know, uh, that Texas Tech will lose again at home for two straight weeks. You know, Kansas going through its fair share of growing pains. Last week, of course, there's offense struggling to get on the board um, for the most part against a pretty stout Oklahoma defense. And I like Tech at home here. Um, you know, if it was a different situation with another quarterback that was, you know, working his way into to the system and everything, that would be something different. But, you know, Daigie, Potts, Sheffield, I mean, it's a factory down there at Texas Tech, and it seems like whichever quarterback plays, you know, moving the ball down the field is not a problem for Texas Tech, regardless of who is under center. I like the Red Raiders just barely at home over Kansas. Next is Iowa State at Texas A&M at 2.30. This is remarkable. If the Cyclones take this one, they'd be eligible for a bowl with six wins. And that could be one of the best turnarounds of the season anywhere in the country when you look at the fact that the Cyclones did not win a Big 12 game all season last uh, last year under Gene Chizik. Paul Rhodes, just a, re- just, you know, a renewed sense of energy on the sideline of the Cyclones. I'm very impressed by that. With that said, I'm going to take A&M at home here. All this buildup for, for Iowa State, and then I'm taking A&M. Sorry about that, Cyclones fans. Uh, you know, A&M looked really good, though, last week on the ground with Cyrus Gray and Christian Michael. I think if they can control the tempo with those two guys again, that they should, you know, win this one at home. It's in College Station, so I like the Aggies there. Uh, last game of the week, Kansas State at Oklahoma at 6 p.m. in Norman. The news here coming from Oklahoma earlier in the week, of course, Sam Bradford uh, having season-ending surgery. He will enter the NFL draft should still probably be a first-round pick, maybe not first overall like he could have been this past year, but he'll still be up there. Um, So it'll be Landry Jones, as it has been for much of the season for Oklahoma. I'm going with the Sooners in this one. Rarely do I ever pick against them at home. This week is no different. Um, K-State, they've been, you know, the last time they were 4-1 was in 1999, so it's been a while since K-State has really been to this level. They're 3-1 in Big 12 play. And it's no coincidence, I don't think, that Bill Snyder is back at the helm coaching the Wildcats. Uh, I did not see them sitting atop the North uh, at this point in the season, or frankly at any point in the season, to be honest. But, you know, credit what they've done. Um, I I really think that this is going to be a true test, though, for Daniel Thomas, the K-State running back, and the Wildcats offense, because this Oklahoma defense is different than anything they've gone up against this year. I like Oklahoma at home to to win. I think OU, with their defense, they have a chance to win every game for the rest of the season. With with a defense like that, you know, they you know they don't have to play Texas. And so, you know, the Sooners could, could roll off a few victories here to close off the year, and I think they'll win this one against K-State. So we'll see how that one goes. Guys, I appreciate you checking out the latest edition. As always, I'll be back uh, this weekend for reflection of all the games. I appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys again this weekend. Thanks.